Good afternoon, everyone. A simple distal and radius fracture can also fool you many times. So let us broadly look at the three reasons why there is a risk factor for displacement. It could be fracture related, it could be surgeon treatment related, or it could be patient related factors. Going into details, it could be because of failure to understand the fracture pattern, poor casting technique, bayonet apposition, translation greater than 50% of diameter of the radius, oblique fracture, apex volar angulation greater than 30 degrees, isolated radius fracture or isolated ulna fracture, dis radial and ulnar metaphyseal fractures at the same level, and of course, the quality of reduction. Facial injuries, usually they are Salter Harris type 2 and they do well with close reduction. Incomplete fractures, buccal fractures are stable and do not require follow-up. But what you should be aware of is a green streak fracture can displace up to 5 degrees and complete fractures of the distal radius are highly unstable. Hence, you must follow them up if you have done a simple close reduction. The acceptable angular Deformity less than 9 years, approximately 15 to 20 degrees, more than 13 years, 0 to 5 degrees. The reduction manures that you can do is a hyper dorsiflexion manure or milking the fracture fragment. And of course, three point molding with slight risk flexion and close follow up is required because of risk of displacement. Above elbow cast if you are suspecting an unstable fracture and facial injury. If it is greater than 5 days old, please don't try to reduce because there is a risk of facial uh, damage. So once you have given the cast, what you must look at is a cast index. So you have to measure the internal anterior posterior diameter in lateral view and you divide it by internal medial lateral diameter measured in AP view and ideally it should be 0 0.7. So what it means that your cast should not be a perfect circle, but it should be something like this. Another index is a three-point index which is more sensitive for distal and radius fractures but a little more complex. Once you have given a cast, what are the reasons for redisplacement in a cast? If the initial displacement is more, then there is a chance that it may displace. The higher the fractures, the, there is a higher chance of displacement. If the fracture is more oblique, then there is a higher chance of displacement. If the reduction is inadequate, then there is a higher chance and of course poor cast molding. So what is bayonet opposition? Okay, so it is acceptable in children up to 6 years as long as angulation alignment parameters are acceptable. However, children greater than 11 years, you need to have opposition at the fracture site. So just to show you an example of a child which remodeled over a period of time. However, if you decide to do reduction, then there are various reduction techniques. You can either use distraction or joystick or the intrafocal pin method as described by Sheetal. Improper fixation. This child had a distal and radius fractures. This type of K-wire was done but it displaced. However, this fracture re remodeled at the age of around, after around 9 months. So what is the remodeling potential and what are the variables that you must consider? Of course, younger the child, better the remodeling potential, distance of fracture to physis, metaphyseal fractures most forgiving, angular deformities, facial growth correction of 0 0.8 to 1 degree per month, and what you should remember is rotational deformities will not remodel. Just to give you an example of how correction happens and remodeling happens. So now we have a fracture which has displaced. So what are the criteria which you have to decide which will tell you that you should go in again and remanipulate. So if it is an isolated distal radius fracture and if you see that there is greater than 25 degree of angulation on the lateral radiograph, if there is greater than 10 degree of angulation on the anterior posterior radiograph and if there is less than 50 percent apposition on either the AP or lateral radiograph, you must go in and you should do remanipulation while in a case or of course if the shift is more than 15 degrees in one week or if there is a combined distal radius and distal ulna fracture then if there is a greater than 10 degrees of angulation of either bone on AP or lateral radiograph and if there is less than 25% apposition of the fracture on the lateral or AP radiograph. 
so you have to be more uh, the variables are better for distal radius so you should be if it is a combined radius and a ulna fracture uh, you cannot accept displaced fractures thank you very much